G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back, finally, to another video. And here we go, with the first video to do with the test season we've just had in Gran Turismo 7. We're going to be doing the Nations Cup today, and we're going to enter to have a look and see that it's four rounds uh, at Tsukuba Circuit in the Mazda Roaster Touring Car. This is the league we're competing in, so they've separated... The race is by league now, so the high DR drivers like A plus or A or above go into the GT1 league, so that's where we'll be uh, competing. You can see five time slots there, ranging from 6pm to 10pm, so not too bad in terms of the times. Okay, so it's the Mazda Road to Touring Car, so we're going to have to go over to Brand Central and make sure we purchase a brand new one and get it race prepped and ready. You can see we're driving uh, or choosing a lovely Mazda Roadster. There. Okay, you might be wondering where the videos have been. I haven't really been doing anything else. It's just the, the test season literally had like a race every day between the manufacturers and the Nations Cup. So that plus everything else I do just meant I, I just did not have time. But I'm finally going to get all the test season videos out to you um, in the form or starting today. But that's the schedule. Four rounds. It's a Cooper circuit using the Mazda Roadster. You can see the top, you can see the dates there from the 21st to the 28th. You got four rounds. But this was on the first day. You can see at 18.32, uh, we are jumping in for practice. Actually, I think the time slots have gone later. Yeah. Oh, no, we missed the six o'clock one. That'll do it. So the next race was at seven o'clock and we're jumping in at 6.30. So we've literally got 30 minutes practice. You can see some of the times there. The top time in the world is 10.4, and we're gonna jump over to our, uh, oh no, 10.3 is the top time in the world. The top time on our friends board is a 10.4, but you can see pretty much anything in the low 11s and you're doing pretty well for yourself. So we've got to aim for that, but it's gonna be quite difficult with only half an hour to get up to the pace. Alrighty, so we're going to jump out. We found a livery or a style for the car as it's now called in Gran Turismo 7 and this was the first lap. So first lap out of the box at a brand new combo and it's a 12.9. Quite a, quite a ways off, probably you know close to about two seconds off there. So we're going to have to make sure uh, we can improve there. We've gained a bit of time through the turn one there and by the end of this lap it was a slight improvement. Actually there was a big improvement to a 12.0 and then we set a second 12.0 on the third lap so we're still close to a second off uh, and then we ended up spinning out and I decided that that was down to the massively ugly oversized rear wing that this particular style had so we've chopped that down a little bit, put the smaller rear wing on to make it look more in proportion with the car, and we eventually set another 12.0, only slightly, only slightly faster. That's going to do it for the practice, that's about all I had time for there, so we've immediately jumped in, we find ourselves in top split, you're not really going to see anything too different in terms of who is in top split, because everybody that was in top split in GT Sport is also going to be in the GT1 league. So pretty much every, everyone you saw in the GT Sport top split will also be in the GT7 top split. So the, the leagues don't really make too much of a difference in terms of what you'll be seeing from me. We have to go out for qualifying, of course. A nice long qualifying session. However, we got held in the pits for ages. I am inevitable. and then about half the grid disconnects. So we're down to seven people. That was 17, we're down to seven. So 10 people have gone skied from the lobby. 10 people have just absolutely disappeared. Thanos has snapped his fingers and half the, half the field is gone. But we're gonna run this race with seven drivers now. So pretty much with seven drivers, uh, the goal for me, only having half an hour practice is basically just not come last. So that's what we're going to do there. This is going to be the first lap here, up behind Twitchy. So he's driven away quite massively, to be honest. And we've only set ourselves a 113.1. So that's quite a horrific lap, in fact. Our second fast lap was a 12.8, slightly faster. And then a 12.5. So we're improving with every with every consecutive lap, except for lap four. But this is going to be our fastest lap there. So we're going to try and get through this lap pretty cleanly. It was a pretty awful, pretty shocking 
Turn one, taking too much inside curb. Turn two and three, easy flat at this track. However, you're going to be braking pretty much on turn three to take the hairpin at turn four. You want to get it stopped. Rotate it around the inside of the turn on the power as early as you can and try not to get any oversteer. We're half a second up at that first sector split. Chuck it into the 90 degree right hander. Don't touch the grass like we did there. That's no good at all. But this lap's feeling a little bit better coming into probably the slowest corner on the track now. The tightest of the three hairpins, I would argue, it seems to go on forever with a little bit of camber on the inside to help get the car around the corner and we launch down the 400 metre back straight. Coming into the last turn, we're still half a second up at this stage, so it's looking to be quite a big improvement as we currently sit seventh out of seven on the standings in terms of this qualifying session. We get through the last turn, okay, up across the line. And I didn't quite see it, I think it was a 11.8. It's something I don't like. You can't see your last qualifying time because it loads so quickly. I think there still does need to be a bit of a delay so you can see what time you set um, because on that particular screen you only see the delta. So I don't know the exact qualifying time I set but at the end of the day it was good enough to pop me in sixth on the grid. Not last and that's all I'll take for now. So this is the first race of the first series of Gran Turismo 7. So we're going to look to try and do ourselves some justice there. We've start pretty much alongside Atom in the red plane Mazda Roadster. We've got the inside for turn one, but Atom has a lot more confidence on the brakes there with his massively oversized rear wing. Maybe that was the meta. No, no, I'm joking. The rear wing actually doesn't make a difference in these balance of performance races. But anyway... Off we go, down to the second hairpin, straight off the line. There's obviously not going to be many strat uh, much strategy in this race. A little bit of argy-bargy there between John who gets up the inside of Twitchy and Lucky. And he's found himself up into second position. That's not too bad from John off the start of the race. Twitchy down in fourth as we're up behind Atom. I think a good goal for this race is to stay behind Atom, but... In all reality, only having jumped in with 30 minutes practice, I was basically, again, just not looking to come last. So we've got Keanu Reeves behind us. Oh, little bit of contact on the exit of turn eight there. And he's got himself a slight overlap as we head down the back straight. And that little tiny bit of contact has just put me off the back of that leading pack there. And we've fallen out of the seven and a half tenth uh, slipstream range. Twitchy and somebody else and Lucky is running side by side through the final turn so maybe we can catch up a little bit of ground. I think Atom's got a little bit of oversteer through there so that's not too good as we run onto that Astro on the exit of the final turn. We've still got about three tenths on Keanu Reeves behind so we've got to make sure we don't lose that position there and I've got to make sure I don't actually fight with Keanu too much because we're still within touching distance of the main peloton up ahead and that is where the positions and moves can be made but we've got to make sure we're in range and make sure we don't fall off the back and that's unfortunately what appears to be happening there is there's a slight bit of contact between Keanu as he goes through but I think I made a hash of the corner before he even arrived on the scene and unfortunately for me that's myself down into seventh over a second off the back of Keanu Reeves so that was no good it took us a little bit of time to catch up this is towards the end of lap three and you can see the time of day is changing it's getting a little bit darker as the sun is setting headlights are on and Keanu gets a little bit of oversteer out of turn eight we've got ourselves a slight overlap uh, heading down the back straight now it's going to be quite difficult to actually try and get this move done because the slipstream has been significantly weakened in Gran Turismo 7 I just make a slight little movement just to try and put him off try and make him make a mistake but he hasn't so I send it a little bit wide here I intended to try and come back for a late apex but I couldn't quite get the car to do what I wanted it to do so I don't quite get the run off the corner there but I'm going to be looking down the inside at turn one I send it as late on the brakes as I can I definitely could have gone later but uh, again given the lack of practice that's about all I was confident enough to try and do at this stage so we're definitely you know towards the closing stage of the race we've only got to have three laps to go after this one so at this stage it's actually going to be quite difficult to actually try and get anything other than si uh, other than sixth yeah other than sixth because all the other drivers have driven away. So it's now just a race between myself and Keanu. We've got to set him up for the place on the track where the move is most likely to occur, which honestly I think is this corner coming up or turn one. Uh, but at the best of times, it's difficult enough to overtake it. Sakuba, he leaves the gap up the inside. We send it down on the brakes, get it rotated at turn eight and get the car nice and square, nice and square on the exit of that corner, get the power down onto the ground. And that's us up into six with a lovely clean little move there. So we've just got to make sure 
we are now driving well enough to actually keep this position. I don't want to start making mistakes and leave Keanu to get back into the fight. So we've just got to get a good exit out of here, get on the power. It's a little bit of wiggling of oversteer there, but we've significantly uh, increased that gap to Keanu as the race goes on. I think perhaps he's dropping off the pace a little bit, either that or I'm finding pace as as the race goes on, it's probably more likely the latter, to be honest, uh, because I couldn't get up to the pace before the race. I'm getting up to the pace during the race, up into six, and that's all we could manage by the end of the race. I mean, you can see the time of day here, though. It's gone to pretty much dusk. Pretty much the, the sun is below the horizon, and you can see the headlights. So, obviously, yeah, a nice little day-night transition for that race, but that's all we could manage for the first round there. Uh, it's really, It was really quite difficult, actually, because... Uh, also part of the reason why I haven't made any videos is uh, in addition to the test season, um, having a race nearly every day, it was also sort of mixed in with my days at work. So this particular race was on a Monday afternoon, which is pretty much the worst day for, to have a race on the game uh, because I finished work quite late. And obviously I finished, I got, I got home at about six o'clock, I think, and I had jumped on to try and get up to speed within half an hour for the race to then take place half an hour after that. So I was quite limited. I also couldn't really stay on the game any longer on Monday because I have other stuff to do. So that was quite difficult there. But I think bringing home, just not last, you know, I was definitely off the pace, didn't have a chance to get up to the pace. And honestly, I didn't crash, which is quite easy to do with the oversteering physics in this new game. So I don't think that was too bad. We're definitely going to be looking to improve as the season goes on. But I'm actually going to leave this video here, a nice short one for a change. Maybe some people like the short ones. I think you do. So uh, I like to make the short ones every now and then. But keep an eye out for the rest of the test season coming up very soon. But as for this video, that's going to end it today. So do hit the like button if you enjoyed. And do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments and constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. That's going to be the end of this one today. And that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later. Thank you.